you're not quite familiar with timber framing, I'm gonna give you a rundown. In the United States, they call it wood framing, but in Australia, we call it timber. So this is by far the most popular construction system for houses in Australia, and also the cheapest one. That beam over there is a lintel, and you need a lintel at every opening. These are the jump studs. They go at each side of the lintel. These are the bracing plies. Common studs, noggings, and steel rods to tie down the structure and the trusses at the top. So as an engineer, when I look at a structural system, I like to recognize patterns. So just by looking at this simple image, I can tell that a timber frame house is composed of a large number of small timber elements working in parallel. So if you have a look at the roof framing, the roof rafters are working in parallel and the wall studs, one next to each other, are sharing the loads like a lot of tiny columns. And on the image below, we can tell that the way which this type of structure transfer gravity loads from the roof down to the footing is through the roof or ceiling, then through the walls, and next through the floor, then wall framing again, and down to the footing. So this might seem to be fairly simple, but it's important that you understand the load paths. So besides gravity loads, we also have lateral loads from wind, which are distributed between bracing walls by the floor and ceiling diaphragms. So if you're building in cyclonic areas, we have cyclonic areas in Australia, wind gusts can get to over 300 Case per hour. Okay, that's the speed of a Formula One car. That's the speed of a Ferrari. And you gotta design the structure properly for these loads. The wind that hits the roof goes through the ceiling, through the brace, through the floor, brace, and footings. The wind that hits the wall goes through the ceiling, brace, floor, brace, and footings. And then again, wind that hits the, the bottom half of the wall goes through the floor, bracing and footings. Three days later. And then the wind that hits the wall goes again through the floor, brace and footing. And the wind that hits the bottom half of the bottom wall goes straight to the footings. This is a simplification. I hope it was easy to, to understand. And this is what a bracing wall looks like. Okay, they're called structural plywood. So the house can be suspended on a grid of joists and barriers or beams. And ex expanding on this, timber framed houses are quite light. They're called lightweight framing for a reason. Floor framing dead loads weight around 40 kilos per square meter. If you're using tiles or a heavy floor, maybe you can get to 90 kilos per square meter. So let's make a comparison. If you have a 150 millimeters um, concrete floor slab, you have already 375 kilos per square meter. So that's it's almost 10 times heavier than a timber framed floor. The house can also be sitting straight on a slab on ground, which looks like this before the concrete is poured. As an engineer, you might use AS1684 to design this type of structure for residential projects only, alongside a couple of other standards like AS2870, residential slabs and footings, AS1170 and 4055 for, for design loads. So the process of construction of the main structures begin with the footings and the sanitary drainage under the slab on ground if you have one. The next step is to lay the concrete floors or barriers and joists and then the wall frame is erected. Finally the roof frame is constructed, roof socking is applied and the cladding is attached to the battens. And following that the construction process goes from installing windows and doors to the installation of plumbing pipes, electrical wirings, and all the fixtures and fittings of a house. The second typical construction method is brick veneer. The walls for this method of construction consist of a brick facade fixed to a timber frame wall on the inside. The layer of brick is fixed to the timber frame with brick ties, as you can see here. There is also a cavity of typically 40 millimeters between the frame and the brick wall, which acts as a moisture barrier and provides insulation 
insulating properties to the house. Remember, the timber frame does all the structural load bearing work. Therefore, the stud wall is holding up the house, not the brick. As an engineer, you're going to use the standard AS1684 again because it is basically a timber framed house. And you might as well use AS4773 to design this type of structure alongside with a couple of other standards, as I mentioned before. So the stages of construction begin with building the footings and sanitary drainage under the slab. The footing could be either a ground beam where you pour the slab on ground at the same time or a strip footing, which has a separate pour. And you would also tie the footing to the slab with Z bars, but you can also pour a ground beam separate and then tie it to the slab with Z bars. So the brick base can be constructed up to the floor level and then next you're gonna lay the floor where there is concrete or timber and if you're building a timber floor you will probably have brick piers to hold up the bearers and joists. So following that timber wall frames are erected including the bracings and the roof framing is constructed and then the tiles or sheet cladding is attached to the battens of the roof framing. Then the windows and exterior door frames are installed and finally the brick walls are constructed. Now the third conventional house building system is double brick house. As the name already suggests, it consists of two brick walls standing side by side with a cavity between and tied together with cavity ties. So for this reason, this construction system is also called cavity brick construction. The internal partitions can be studs, bricks, or concrete blocks, and you can render or line with wallboard later. As an engineer, again, you're gonna use standards, and the standard for this type of construction is AS4773, alongside with a couple of other standards that we mentioned before. The first step, in the construction process is to lay the reinforced footings and install the sanitary drainage. The bricks are laid up to the slab floor level or when using timber floor, usually up to the bottom of the bare height. Following that, the floor is laid and the inner leaf of the double wall is built with the windows and exterior doors built in. So the internal partitions are constructed and the roof is erected. The internal linings are attached and all interior doors fitted and finishing work um, will be carried out as well. So at the same time, the outer brick leaf can be built as well. So the last system that we're going to touch upon here is the block work construction. Well, block work construction in Australia usually uses 190 millimeters thick blocks as external walls, while the internal partitions can be constructed in timber or 90 or 140 millimeters blocks. So if you if you are reinforcing the internal walls, you will have to use 140 or 190 millimeters blocks. So the external block walls can be either reinforced or unreinforced. When it comes to reinforced mainstream walls. Typically, we use N12s or N16 bars and they're placed in specific vertical cores, also in bone beams and in the lintels as well at every opening. As previously stated, the engineer can use AS4773 to design this type of structure for residential projects alongside a couple of other standards. Also, you can go to the website of the Concrete Mainstream Association of Australia and they've got several design manuals that you can use. It's pretty handy. So the process of building begins with the footing construction or laying any block work below the slab level if you are retaining soil. So you have, you pretty much have a small retaining, retaining wall in there. And again, the slab is prepared with all relevant drainage and all the plumbing services which will be installed. And the next step, the block work is constructed with all the reinforcement. And if you work in the industry, you will hear a lot of people saying real, which is the short for reinforcement. If you have noticed, Australians love shortening words, so you better get used to it. And then we've got the anchor boats who are installed. They have to be designed, especially if you're building in cyclonic areas, which I said before, wind gusts can get you over 300 k's per hour, and that can blow up your roof and kill people if you don't design and install it properly. Then the plumbing and the electrical conduits are installed, and finally the concrete is poured to the vertical cores with all the reinforcement bars, lintels, and bone 
on beams. Top plates um, will be fixed to the block walls if required and the internal partitions and roof framing constructed. So the same process, you can attach socking, uh, all the cladding to the roof. You can render the exterior walls if required. You can paint it, you can install, and then you're gonna install the windows and doors and all the fixtures and fittings. And if you wanna learn how structural engineers inspect buildings under construction, watch this video next and I'll see you there.